Welcome to the video on risk budgeting. Although this segment once again comes from a section of the curriculum, a, a reading which I don't particularly enjoy because it's not, in my opinion, um, let's say very specific, concrete, tangible, this is the first in instance in that reading where I can say, okay, it becomes a little bit more specific because finally the authors come back to the notion of managing a portfolio which is what you know the CFA exam is all about so risk budgeting in the in the way it is described in this uh, section of the of the reading is the follow-on step from determination of the level of risk tolerance so we you know in, in a previous video we discussed risk tolerance that was all about setting or determining the appetite uh, for risk at the level of the organization and of course in an organization especially corporate context that does indeed happen at the board of directors level and then risk budgeting the next step is drilling down and focusing on how that overall level of risk as determined by the appetite is to be taken more specifically how the risk is to be taken and there are some very nice analogies here to the portfolio approach which we'll talk about in just a moment so it's about allocating it's about the allocation of that tolerable risk which comes from our level of risk tolerance and providing guidance, uh, more specific guidance for the implementation of, uh, of uh, policies, investment policies. And, you know, this allocation of tolerable risk happens across the various risk factors or risk drivers and a very nice example coming from the curriculum which I amended slightly in terms of providing different figures is when you think about classic portfolio um, allocation so allocation typically means let's put this and this much money in this percentage of the money into shares this percentage of the money into bonds uh, something into hedge funds something into commodities and so on well if you think about allocating, but across not asset classes, but across the drivers of risk, you would probably do something like, you know, uh, the numbers are absolutely hypothetical here, but maybe let's put 60% of the money in such a way that it gives us exposure to uh, global equity markets or global equity returns, right? Uh, maybe something like you know 30 percent so that it gives us exposure to domestic equity returns and perhaps uh, you know something like 10 percent exposure to interest rates now of course exposure to interest rates is gained by uh, typically by investing in specific types of bonds whereas global equity or domestic equity returns come from investing in shares but given the fact that we may get that exposure via publicly traded instruments as well as something like uh, private equity or hedge funds you know we now we now think in different categories than hedge funds pri uh, private equity public equity etc and make allocations to those but rather pick out the driving factors or the risk factors be behind the returns which may be affecting multiple asset classes another split could be you know liquid versus illiquid assets so you see here it we go in a, in a very different way to the classic 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 allocation across uh, asset classes because that classic allocation doesn't really say all that much about the exposure to specific drivers that are behind those returns so you could say that risk budgeting therefore becomes an exercise in allocating uh, 
and this is why I like this specific section because we go back to portfolio based uh, you know investment portfolio based concepts as opposed to thinking about organizations which is which is which is much more much less tangible because our organizations are so different um, maybe so varied and different it's about allocating uh, the portfolio or the money in the portfolio based on risk characteristics okay um, so how do we determine this um, let's say allocation or how do we think about the risk budget well the risk budget that is the total uh, level of risk that we have an appetite for or which is tolerable tolerable at the organizational level so total risk level uh, or total risk level or stroke limit actually for the organization as a whole that could be defined in ways which are sometimes quite simple and a simple way simple or one dimensional way would be to think about risk in terms of for example standard deviation or perhaps value at risk or perhaps beta which is what you get exposure to when you invest in equities at least the market level uh, you know the market exposure or of course as with all of these splits if there is a simple way then there also must be a more complex one and this complex one would be multi-dimensional so uh, based not on one uh, idea of risk but based on multiple dimensions of risk so for example uh, beta but also standard deviation depending on the type of asset dimensions of risk which is i guess what we intuitively do when we have complex portfolios combining different uh, uh, assets with exposures to different risks now let's conclude this relatively short video with an outline of the benefits of risk budgeting because although your book says that this is a very worthwhile um, exercise uh, it's not the case that everybody really does it properly at the you know at the at the top down level so what it does is it forces us to think in terms of risk trade-offs it forces risk trade-offs because we must acknowledge that we can't take all those risks if we are to fit them within a certain predetermined limit. It also supports, and I can definitely agree with this, it supports a culture where every discussion, every discussion concerning investment decisions takes into account the risk because risk is so central here because we've got a total budget which we need to uh, fit within so where risk definitely is considered in all discussions and all uh, decisions and finally the last uh, point which i guess is uh, an outcome type, type, type of, type of uh, point, but a valuable outcome. Uh, if this is done properly, then it should result, or well, the outcome should be that we choose uh, investments. And once again, we are very much back to the investment context, which I very much appreciate here, with the uh, absolutely highest return per unit of risk relationship. So given the fact that we only have a limited amount of risk that we can take, we should better, we should better allocate our resources where the optimal or the maximum amount of return per level of, per unit of risk may be, uh, may be yielded or squeezed out. This is very much what happens 
for example, in banking, where you've got a limited amount of uh, equity capital, which acts as your risk or which your, as your loss absorber, and you really need to put that capital to equity capital to good use uh, and think about that trade-off. 